Welcome to podcasts recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. Thank you, Mark Steele. Ah. So we're going to begin tonight's home for the holiday service with a carol, Joy to the World. Should we stand and sing? We or sing sit together and, today? We, we'll sit and sing. <laughs> sit but and sing together. Yeah, but sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. With truth and grace And makes the nations prove And glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders and wonders of His love Joy to the world the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Thank you to the Steel Trio, to Mark. What a lovely holiday evening, and welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living's Home for the Holidays Christmas Eve service. Whether you're joining us here in our sanctuary or in our virtual Facebook Live spiritual community, we are grateful for your presence, for the conscious choice to set aside the fa-la-la, merriment, mirth, and cheer for just a few moments where we come and celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the world a better place. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. And my name is Reverend Marilyn Sprague. I serve on the ecclesiastical team here at the center as Director of Education and Community Connections. And it is a delight, a privilege, and an honor to welcome you as we celebrate the birth of the I Am Christ Consciousness within each of us. Yes, tonight we celebrate the emergence of a new consciousness in, through, and as each of us. And oh, what a festive Christmas Eve celebration is planned for our rejoicing this evening. Tonight, our special music is provided by the entire Steele family. We have, we have Mark on keyboards and our vocal artists, the Steele Trio, La Ronda, Lo, and Sarah. Yay! This evening's message, Home for the Holidays, is by Reverend Larry King. And oh, there's so much more. We have inspirational readings. We have the biblical Christmas story from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 14. And of course, one of our seasonal favorites, which is the candle lighting ceremony. So I invite you to sit back and relax because I know that somewhere between the magical music, the inspirational readings, the message, and the candle lighting ceremony, a manger is created to receive the birth of the I am Christ consciousness in your mind and heart. Let us pray. In this now moment, we set aside the busyness of the world and we make a conscious choice to go within. We recognize the one power, the one presence, the one mind of infinite intelligence, the Christ consciousness, and knowing that there is no separation between the creator and its creation, knowing that it resides within. It resides as the I am Christ consciousness within each of us. And so I claim and affirm for our sacred time this evening that there is an open mind and an open heart to allow the emergence of this Christ consciousness to flow in, through, and as everything that is done here this evening. I claim and affirm a willingness to be still and to know, to know that that divine spark, that divinity resides within. And on this, the eve of Christmas, we celebrate the Christ consciousness. And so I am so grateful for this truth that God is all there is. God is the I am Christ consciousness and it resides within each of us. And so I place this word into the activity and action of the law, knowing that the law is that eternal servant of spirit. It has only one response. It is the big yes of life. And so with absolute conviction, together we say, and so it is. Thank you. 
for that prayer, Reverend Marilyn, our centering. So now we're going to kind of wake you up a little bit. Is that all right? Oh, you better go. searching for my soul I went inside and I found a precious loving Lord and he said go go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Christ within is born Christ within is born. I know that God lives within me. You can hear her when we sing. Her love moves right through me. It's as precious as everything. Oh, go, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and I got to hear them practicing earlier. <laughs> what a pleasure to have your whole family here tonight. I don't get to see some of these folks as much as I used to either. It's a real pleasure, especially Mark. I don't get to see you often enough. I need to find out where you hang out more often, I think. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. So glad you're here. You know, we're doing a number of readings from one of my favorite theologians, Howard Thurman, tonight. And I'd like to, to read one for you right now. It's called Gifts on My Altar. And it's from his book, Meditations of the Heart. I place these gifts on my altar this Christmas, gifts that are mine, even as the years are mine, the quiet hopes that flood the earnest cargo of my dreams. The best of all good things, of course, for those I love. A fresh new trust for those whose faith may have dimmed. The love of life, God's precious gift in reach of all. And seeing in each day the seeds of tomorrow. Finding in each struggle the strength of renewal. And seeking in each person the face of a brother or sister. I place these gifts on my altar this Christmas Gifts that are mine, even as the years are mine.
waters reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. The Christmas Story from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The shepherds and the angels, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that there will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh he Oh, 
Christ was born. So, Sarah, were, were you satisfied with the ending? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, let, I'm letting loose secrets of rehearsal here. <laughs> we, we were having a good time practicing that one. I say we. I'm listening, right? But <laughs> Well, I'm so glad you're joining us today, uh, both online as well as here in the sanctuary. And I think I want to spend just a second explaining my title. You know, we do our talk titles some months ahead. And back when I decided that uh, Christmas Eve should be home for the holidays, uh, you know, things were very different. We had just opened the sanctuary up again this summer. And, uh, and, and gosh, I don't know, we had like 60 people on, on a Sunday. And, and I was thinking home for the holidays really would mean coming home, as in our spiritual home, in person again for the holidays. The number of caseloads for COVID-19 was way down. Uh, people were, were uh, you know, getting vaccinated, and there was much less worry about um, catching anything and so on. And uh, gosh, it turns out that my thoughts didn't quite work out the way that I had imagined. I know there are many more people choosing to watch us online on Facebook Live than, than are here in the sanctuary. And I totally get that, right? This is a time when we need to pay attention. We need to do some risk assessments and understand what's right for us. And I'm, I'm so glad we did spend this year working on the availability of technology and adding some cameras and doing what's necessary that people can really watch us from around the world and, and in the safety of their own homes. But home for the holidays, I, I certainly didn't mean it to be stay home for the holidays. <laughs> and, uh, and, and oh my gosh, you know, I was reading the New York Times today, they're canceling all kinds of flights, people are making it, you know, very difficult to physically get home for the holidays, even, even if you would choose to. And so I thought to myself, you know, it really calls for a little bit different kind of message than what I had imagined. Still home for the holidays, but, but maybe we need to talk about what it means to be home. 
And so I want to spend a moment talking about that idea of coming home for the holidays. What, what might that mean? Well, for me, it meant that sense of security. It meant connecting with people that maybe I don't get to be with all the time. It, it meant some of the, the special traditions that my family had. It meant a, maybe a deeper sharing than what we get to do all year. You know, for a lot of friends and families, we're, we're so used to those quick kind of interchange, how you doing, uh, that we forget that there's a time for sitting down and having meaningful conversation. There's a time for really actively listening to the people that we love. It was something that always impressed me uh, during the holidays when I was growing up. Sometimes those, those almost like figures, those, those uh, creatures called ants and cousins that I'd only get to see once a year, I would actually sit down and have a, a real conversation with them. And so Home for the Holidays, for me anyway, meant connection, it meant a sharing of love, it meant that ability to get to know people better, to catch up. It meant that sense of, of safety that comes with being your authentic self too, right? With those people, in my life anyway, I felt that I could authentically be myself. It meant that, uh, uh, you know, warts and all, here, here I was, and I was accepted. And so I, I want to ask you, what does being home for the holidays mean to you? Does it mean a physical kind of thing? Does it mean you have to be in a certain place doing a certain thing with certain people? Or is it more of a sense? You know, over the last few years, I've had a variety of different, uh, I would say, different kinds of holiday experiences. Most of my family has actually passed away now. I, I come from a three-generation only child kind of thing going. And so with the passing of my grandparents and my uh, mother and father, they're really isn't much other than second and third cousins. And so over the last few years, I've spent Christmases alone, Christmases with friends, Christmases with some of those distant relatives. And, and I have to tell you, each one had its own unique flavor, and each one of them still allowed me to have that sense of being home for the holidays. You know, I think it's time for my Christmas joke, and then we'll move on. All right, so a father took his son Billy to the Lloyd Center Mall to see Santa. They stood in line a bit, and finally the boy was able to meet Santa and sit on his lap. What would you like for Christmas, Billy, asked Santa. An iPad and a book about dinosaurs, said Billy. Okay, we'll see what we can do about that, said Santa with a twinkle in his eye. But I have to ask, Billy, have you been a good boy? Well, later on that day, Billy and his father went to pick up something downtown at a store, and Billy spied another Santa through a store window. Can we stop, he asked. Billy's father said, well, okay. So they went in and got in line for a second Santa. When Santa asked Billy what he wanted for Christmas, Billy said an iPad and a book about dinosaurs. Well, on the way out of the store, Billy's father just had to ask, Billy, why did you want to see the second Santa? Didn't you ask for exactly the same things? Yes, yeah, said Billy, but did you notice the second Santa didn't require any promises? <laughs> and so I got to ask you, could it be that sometimes we're counting on the outside world to give us what we need to enjoy ourselves? Could it be that we have strings attached even to our own experiences of Christmas or the holidays? You know, this has been a tough year on a, on a number of levels, and I know that some people are not celebrating the holidays as maybe they wish they would, that, that friends that maybe were close or physically distant um, I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of Zoom fatigued. Even, even with the people I love, it's, it, it's important, it's good, I'm happy for it. It's a way for me to see people that are distant. And yet, I have to admit, there's a kind of a distance that's still there, even on Zoom. And I'm getting a little fatigued about it. But ultimately, 
Each of us has the choice of bringing ourselves home for the holidays. And if you're willing, I'd like to uh, do an experiment with you. Uh, if you're willing, close your eyes for just a moment. I'm going to lead you in just a bit of a short meditation. So I'd like you to think back, think back to a time when you really felt safe and secure at home. And, and I'll allow you to define home however you choose. A time when you really felt safe, you felt secure and comfortable. It may be a childhood home. It may be the home that you live in right now. But make sure as you visualize it that it's a place where you can authentically be you. There's no strings attached. It's safe, it's secure, it's warm, it's inviting. You're at home right now. And I invite you just to notice in your mind's eye what this home is like. It might not even be indoors. Some people feel at home in nature. Just look around you in your mind's eye and just notice the things about this particular place you're calling home. Notice if you're by yourself or if you're with friends or family. Notice all of the particulars that make it feel inviting and safe and warm. Notice any details about yourself. How are you feeling? Is it that sense of connection with others or is it that sense of security and being uh, fully, uh, fully actualized as your own self? Just notice how you're feeling, what's around you, the situation. And I ask you to release anything that interferes with a total feeling of acceptance and belonging. This is your safe place. If there's anything there that you'd prefer was not there, just allow it to fade into the background. This is a space of non-judgment. This is a place truly of acceptance and comfort. So, so just release anything that would interfere with that. And I also invite you to add anything that would make it even more festive, more real, more welcoming, more homey. Invite friends or family that, uh, that you'd like to have in this home for the holidays. It can be people that you know, people that you'd like to know, people in your life right now, people that have passed on. Anyone that you would like to be there in this home for the holidays. Just invite them in. Invite their spirits in. Just notice how you're feeling. Notice your heart. Notice this particular home for the holidays. And so I invite you to open your eyes again. You did this, you know. At any time, you can be home for the holidays. You have that power over your thoughts. You have that power over your emotions. There's no such thing. There's nothing that a pandemic can take away from you. There's no such thing that can deny you the experience that you wish to have. And so if your holidays are not going as expected, so what? I invite you to be home for the holidays just as you are, just as bright as you are, just as beautiful as you are. That Christ consciousness is born again in everyone on this night. That ability to sense the love and the light of the world is right here. Yes, we have to be doing things a little differently maybe than we had planned. We're, we're wearing masks. We're assessing risks around being people. It's okay. It's okay. The light of the world, the love of the world, the joy and peace of the world 
is here for you now. And you have the power of creating it in your own mind, of opening your heart to receive it. You have that power. And so the birth of Jesus represents the birth of a new way of living for each one of us. Something that we can renew every year on this special day. A belief in our, in our own self at bringing about a world that works for us as well as others. It's a time of, uh, of reveling in that idea of peace on earth and goodwill towards others. It's a time that invites us to bring out the best in nature in ourselves to give as presents to other people. Truly, we can be the gift ourselves. Makes shopping so much easier to know that what people really want is authentically you. And so I invite you um, this evening, perhaps when you get home, to just think about what home for the holidays means to you and how you can make a home for the holidays for others. Let us pray. There is one power, one presence, one life, one joy, one peace. There is only this one thing that I call God. And what I know about God is that it is moving in, around, and through everyone on this planet. We are uniquely tied together. We are part of the same thing, part of the same love, part of the same life. And even as we celebrate the, the birth of a Christ child from 2,000 years ago today, we also celebrate the birth within ourselves of that greater consciousness of love and light. And I'm grateful for this. I let it be. And together we say, and so it is. Now is our time of conscious uh, contribution if you'd like to take your gift or your tithe, I think um, we're going to be joined with some additional music in a moment. I invite you, if you like, just to place your gift over your heart and repeat after me. Graciously, I give, Graciously I give. From, a from a place of love, knowing that as I give, that as I give. So, do I receive. so do I greatly receive. Would the ushers please or usher, I think, tonight. <laughs> Bless you. Would the usher please begin receiving the gifts? Love that. 
that sets us free. There is only love. Let's sing it together again. There is sets us free. There is only love. There is only love. Come on up. Let's, let's bless the offering. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you for being the usher. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Portland Center for Spiritual Living, I receive these gifts with great love. I know that our vision of a world that works for everyone, our, our mission of personal empowerment, I know that as we pay our bills, as we make gifts to other nonprofits, truly, this circle of love expands in the world. I'm grateful I let it be, and so it is. So we're moving, oh, just a sec. Got to get my mask protocols working here. So we're moving into the part of the evening where we're going to do some personal candle lighting. And let me kind of explain the process a little different here. Uh, you know, there have been years when we were kind of bunched up at the table and things like that. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to have the, the two younger steels help me light uh, the main candles there. In, in the nature of making the fire marshal uh, happy, though, the, the little individual tea lights Sadly, you switch on, so just they at least blink a little bit. So, just 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 so you know, and uh, and what what I would invite you to do this year is to light two of the votives, one of them to celebrate your own home for the holidays and what that means for you. So, so think about how you would like to spend maybe this, uh, the rest of the holiday season here between, new, uh, between now and New Year's. Just think about making an intention of, of how you would like to spend that time and, and light one of the candles for that. And then if you're willing, I think it's important, especially with some of the how do I want to say, some of the contention going on in the world now, some of the trouble going on, some of the more, more heated than usual trouble going on in the world, I'd invite you to light a second candle, uh, maybe to represent peace on earth, maybe to represent the, the fellowship, um, the, the communication, the good communication that we might have with our neighbors and with each other. But let's, uh, let's move on to, to lighting the main candles. Again, a reading from Meditations of the Heart by Howard Thurman. And uh, yes, you have the power stick there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So candles for Christmas. I will light candles this Christmas. Candles that will burn the whole year long. Candles of joy despite all sadness. Candles of hope, where despair keeps watch. I light this candle for hope. Candles of courage, for fears ever present. I light this candle for courage. Candles of peace, for tempest-tossed days. The stage manager's nightmare, I know. <laughs> and candles of love to inspire all of my days. I 
I will light these candles this Christmas, candles that will burn all day long. And so I invite you to, uh, um, as you're feeling it, just come forward and light a couple candles and place them on our altar here. Let's see. And so with all of our beautiful candles lit and our intentions set for peace and love, harmony, courage, hope, I'd like to close our service tonight with a final reading from Howard Thurman and a prayer. All of our readings this evening have been composed by Howard Thurman, African-American theologian, educator, civil rights leader, and creator of one of America's first non-denomination Christian churches. And so our uh, final reading for this evening is The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. The work of Christmas. So let us pray. As our home for the holidays service concludes, the warmth in our heart, the emergence of that Christ consciousness, the I am that is within, filling our mind and our heart. We open to new beginnings, to that love, that light, 
and to the one source, the unity of all things, the harmony, the cooperation, knowing that at this time we celebrate love, we celebrate peace, and we rejoice in joy. We recognize that each of us is the place where love, peace, harmony, joy shows up. And so on this Christmas Eve, there is only love. And we rejoice in it. And together we say, and so it is. Let's join in together and sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright around the young virgin mother and child. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have inspirational services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our online listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.